machine landed in the 21st century. I got away just in time. A baby. My aunt just had a baby girl. We went to the hospital to visit my aunt and to see the new baby. My aunt was feeling fine, although she was just a bit tired. She walked with us to a big window that had lots of babies in it. She pointed to a crib with a baby in it. The baby was wrapped in a pink blanket. We all said how pretty the baby was. I couldn't believe how tiny the baby was. She was asleep, so we couldn't see her eyes. When the baby went home, we went to visit her. We heard the baby. She was crying. My aunt said the baby was hungry. My aunt had a baby bottle full of warm milk. She fed the baby with it. The baby was happy after that. My aunt patted the baby on the back until the baby burped, and then the baby fell asleep. I held the baby. I looked at her tiny fingers and tiny toes. I was very careful with her. She opened her eyes and looked at me. I spoke to the baby, but I knew that she could not understand me. Babies have to learn to walk and talk. My aunt changed the baby. Babies wear diapers, so they need to be changed often. The baby has a lot of toys, but she is still too young to play with them. My aunt says that it won't be long before the baby is crawling and trying to talk. Babies are cute. I have seen pictures of myself when I was a baby, and it's hard to believe that I was once that small. A wedding. The church bells are ringing. I am inside the church waiting for my cousin to walk down the aisle. Today is her wedding day. She is a bride. The organist is playing a song on the organ. We all stand up and watch my cousin walk down the aisle. She is arm in arm with her father. She is dressed in a long white dress and a veil. She looks so beautiful. She looks like a princess. The man who she is going to marry is standing at the front of the church. He is the groom. He looks nice, too. He is wearing a suit, and he has a flower in his light bulb. The minister says words to the couple, of which will make them man and wife. The bride and groom smile at each other, but they seem to be a little bit nervous. They give each other gold rings to wear to symbolize that they are married. They kiss each other and walk out of the church as the organist plays joyous music. 
Some of the people in the church cried at the wedding, but not because they were sad. Everyone in the church is happy for the couple. A photographer takes pictures of the happy couple. We wish them well and look forward to the reception where we will have a dinner. And we will dance and have a good time until it is very late. The bride will throw her bouquet of flowers. And it is said, whoever catches the bouquet will be the next bride. The next day, the bride and groom will leave for their honeymoon. My cousin and her husband are going to Mexico for their honeymoon. My dad. My dad is the man whom I respect the most in my life. He works very hard to make the money that supports us. My mother has a job too. And she also works very hard. My dad is the principal of a high school. He works at the school all day and often has to go to meetings at night. He deals with parents, students, and staff. There is always something that he has to deal with. He has a lot on his mind. It doesn't matter how much work my dad has to do. He always has time for my brothers, my sister, and me. If I go to him with a problem, he will sit down and discuss it with me. He doesn't yell. He is always very logical and he tries to think of the best way to deal with things. My dad is a very patient man. Once I spilled some ink on papers that he was working on. I thought he would be mad, but he didn't get angry. He said it was okay. He takes time out to do things with us. He has taken my brothers fishing. He takes me to the arena to skate, and he helps my sister to write her essays and assignments. He always makes us laugh. He makes us feel like we are very special to him. He is a very good father, and on Father's Day, I always buy him a card that tells him how much he means to me. I think it is important to have good parents. I hope that when I have children, I will be a good parent like my parents are to me. Parents give children the foundation they need to live good lives. My mother. My mother does so many things. She has a job at a dress store. She cooks our meals, she cleans the house, she feeds the pets, and she still finds time to spend with us. My mother is always busy, but she says that her favorite time is time that she spends with us. My mother works from Monday to Friday. When she comes home from work, she makes something for supper. We usually do the dishes so that she won't have to do them. After supper, she helps us with our homework or she sits down to watch television. Some nights she goes shopping and she takes whoever wants to go with her. Mothers are a little bit of everything. My mother is like a teacher when she helps us with our homework. She is like a nurse when she looks after us all when we were ill. She is like a cook 
when she makes meals for us. She says that cleaning the house is her least favorite thing. She says that the house gets dirty again right after you clean it. She gets my father, my brothers, sister, and me to help her with the cleaning. My mother washes all our clothes, and sometimes she irons them if they need it. My mother says that there are not enough hours in a day. We try to help my mother as much as we can. There is a lot of work involved in keeping a home neat and organized. Most of my friends' mothers work. Mothers are the people who you go to when you need to be comforted. Mothers are the people who could make you feel better. I'm glad that I have the mother that I have. My mother is caring and funny. She is fun to be around. A surprise. Friday, my dad came home from work and said that he had a surprise for us. We tried to guess what the surprise might be. My brother guessed that we were going out for dinner. My dad said no. My other brother asked if my father had tickets to a hockey game. My dad said no. My sister asked if we were going on a trip. My dad said no. My mother knew what the surprise was, so she just stood and smiled at us. I guessed that we might be getting a swimming pool. My dad said no. We were getting very frustrated trying to guess what the surprise might be. My brother asked how big the surprise was. My dad said that the surprise was quite small. We were not sure what the surprise could be. Will we all like it? I asked. Yes, my dad replied. Every one of you will love this surprise. We heard a noise. It was a crying noise. Your surprise wants to see you, my dad said. He opened the door to the bedroom, and a tiny puppy came running out. We were all very excited. Our surprise was a puppy. It was a little baby spaniel. The puppy loved all of us. She ran around and licked all of our faces. We had always wanted a dog. We took turns feeding the puppy and taking her out for walks. She is growing quickly. And will soon be an adult dog. We all agree that the puppy was the nicest surprise my dad could have given us. Rhyming words. Sometimes my friends and I play a game. It's something we made up, so it doesn't have a name. We like to take words that rhyme. We put them together line by line. Do you get the picture now? We're playing the game, and this is how. I might say I like to drive a car. I really don't like to go very far. If I decide to take a walk, I go with a friend so that we. Could talk. Do you see that these lines rhyme? Play the game if you have the time.
We could talk about school or even playing. Do you know what I am saying? Rhyming words is easy to do. It's fun for me. It can be fun for you. Just join in and say something. Or make it into song that you can sing. There are so many words that rhyme with others. Like smile and mile and mothers and brothers. I could spend all day just making up these things. I could let my imagination fly on wings. Up to the clouds and back to my mind. There are so many rhymes that I can find. There are some words that are hard to find rhymes for. I don't use those words anymore. I like to choose words that are easy to rhyme, like cat and bat or lime and time. So give it a try. I know you'll have fun. I'll say goodbye. My rhyming is done. Homework. Sometimes my teacher gives us homework. I don't mind doing my homework except when the weather is really nice and all my friends are outside. On those nights, I'd rather be outside with them, so I try to get my homework done quickly. Tonight, I have some English homework. We have been reading a book. We have to read a chapter of the book and answer the questions at the end of the chapter. It is an interesting book, so the homework for this is quite easy. My math homework is not so easy. I have to do some addition and subtraction. I don't mind that, but there are some problems that need to be solved. The problems involve addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I am not too good with numbers. I need to work harder on my math. I just finished a project for history. I had to make a map of Canada with diagrams showing the routes of all the explorers. It was an interesting project because I have been to some of the places that the explorers went to. I don't have any science homework. At school, we are growing bean plants. We go in every day and see how the plants have grown. We write down all the changes that occur in the plant every day. The only other homework that I have is geography. I have a map of Canada, and I have to write the names of all the provinces and their capitals on it. It won't take long to do that because I know all the provinces. When my homework is done, I will go outside and play ball with my friends until it is time to come home. I am a good student. I get good marks because I like school. My favorite subjects are physical education, English, and history. Math is my least favorite subject, but I'm trying to improve my marks in that. Opposites. Some things are opposite of each other. The opposite of black is white. The opposite of happy is sad. If I am at the opposite side of the room from you, it means that I am at the other side of the room that you are on. The opposite of up is down, 
And the opposite of left is right. Do you know what the opposite of young would be? Old is the opposite of young. What is the opposite of dirty? Clean is the opposite of dirty. Big is the opposite of small. Man is the opposite of woman. Boy is the opposite of girl. Sometimes people think the opposite things than other people. Someone might be wrong and someone might be right. The opposite of mother is father. See if you can think of some opposites. It is cold in the winter and it is hot in the summer. My father is very tall and my brother is very short. A rock is hard, but a pillow is soft. An ocean is deep, but a puddle is shallow. I might tell the truth, but I might tell a lie. All of these things are opposites. The morning is bright, but the night is dark. A feather is light, but an elephant is heavy. Sugar is sweet, but a lemon is sour. A jet plane is fast, but a turtle is slow. I can go out in a day, or I can go out at night. I might love to swim, or I might hate to swim. It is interesting to see how many opposites you can think up. I could say hello, but I think it's time to say goodbye. The Smart Paper Boy In my town, there is a paper boy who just got an award for his actions. This boy delivered the local newspaper every morning. One of the people to whom he delivered the paper was an elderly man. This man lived alone. The paper boy had often spoken to the man, so he knew that the man lived alone. The paper boy always left the newspaper in the man's mailbox. One morning, the boy noticed that the man had not picked up his newspaper or his mail from the day before. The boy felt that something was not right. All day at school, the boy had a feeling that something might be wrong with the man. After school, the boy went back to the man's house to see if he had taken his mail and newspapers. The newspapers and mail were still in the mailbox. The boy knocked on the man's door. He could hear a faint voice, but could not hear what the person was saying. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. The boy knew that something wasn't right, so he went home and called the police station. He explained to the police that the man lived alone. He gave the address of the man's house to the police. The police knocked on the door, and they also heard the faint voice. The police got into the house and found the man lying at the bottom of the stairs. The man had fallen and broken his hip. The man had not been able to get up. He had been afraid that nobody would find him. He was very grateful to the paper boy for caring enough to get to the police. The boy got an award. The man said the boy was a hero. 
The police said the boy was an example of a very good citizen. The paper boy and the man are very good friends. The man will never forget what the paper boy did for him. Niagara Falls is a famous place. A lot of tourists visit here every year. Most of the tourists come to see the waterfalls. The waterfalls are very beautiful and powerful. At night, they shine lights on the falls that make them even more dramatic. Tourists line up against the railings to watch the water as it tumbles into the Niagara River. There are other things in the Niagara Falls that the tourists like to visit. There are a lot of gift shops and museums. There are many hotels that the tourists can stay at. Tourism is very important to Niagara Falls. Many people work in the tourism industry. There are many jobs in the tourism industry. You can take a special bus and tour Niagara Falls. You can ride in a horse-drawn carriage and Niagara on the lake. Or you can take a balloon ride over the falls from the American side. You can even ride in a helicopter over the falls. Niagara Falls is very busy in the summertime. Summer is the time when most tourists visit here. Sometimes the tourists think it's raining near the falls, but it is only the mist that rises from the mighty waterfalls. There are many legends and stories connected to Niagara Falls. There is a special legend called the Maid of the Mist. There are stories about the daredevils who thought that they were more powerful than the falls. Some of them went over the falls in barrels and others walked on tight ropes over the falls. Both of those things are very dangerous. I stand behind the railings when I look at the falls. I know just how powerful the falls are. It is interesting to discover all the stories that there are about Niagara Falls. The Library One of my favorite places is the library. I go there to get books for school and I go there to get books for pleasure. I often read mysteries for fun. In this summer, I read lots of mysteries. I like to sit outside and read. In the winter, I have to read books for school. I go to the library to find out things from my projects. I often use the dictionary and the atlas. Some of my friends go with me and we sit at the tables and do our homework. We can't make a lot of noise in the library. People have to be quiet when they're in a library. When I first went to the library, I was confused about how to find books. The librarian showed me how to use the computer to find books. Now I am able to do all the research myself. I have read some very interesting books. I have learned a lot from library books. I always bring the books back on time so I don't get a fine. I am collecting books at home.
People often give me books for gifts. Soon I will have my own library. Reading is a good hobby. Everyone in my family likes to read. The library has other things besides books. There are videos at the library. There are also compact discs at the library. I have a library card so I can get books, videos, or compact discs whenever I want to. My mother sometimes goes to the library to look at the magazines. She gets some good recipes from the magazines. My father looks for books on how to build things. He is building some bookshelves for me at the moment. He found the instructions in a book. My little brother reads children's books. He likes books about trains. I have liked books ever since I was very small. My mother says that reading is a good habit to get into. And I grow up. I have been thinking about what I'd like to be when I grow up. There are so many choices. I could be a principal like my father. I could be a teacher. I like animals. Maybe I should be a veterinarian. My cat just went to the veterinarian to get her shots. I don't think my cat was too happy to be there. I could be a farmer and grow vegetables. Maybe I could be a doctor and cure people. If I was good enough, I could be a famous sports person or a singer. I could be an actor on television or in the movies. Maybe I would like to be a policeman or a fireman. I could rescue people. I can play the piano. Maybe I should be a musician. I could be a lawyer. I sometimes watch shows about lawyers defending people. Lawyers have to be able to speak well. I could be a carpenter and work with wood, or I could be a welder and work with metal. There are just so many jobs. I could work in a restaurant. I could cook food. Or I could serve food. I could be an airline pilot or the captain of a ship. I could be a repairman or an artist. The world is full of jobs. Some of the jobs require a lot of education. Some require a little bit of training. And some require a lot of training. It's all up to me. I can be whatever I want to be. Clouds are white. Polar bears, some dogs, and some cats are white. There are white flowers that grow. Some flowers are red. Roses can be red. Blood. Is red. Sometimes the sky is red at night or in the morning. Artists use all these colors to make beautiful paintings. Nature used all these colors to make the beautiful earth. We are fortunate to be surrounded by beauty. We should do our part to make sure that nature stays beautiful and clean. Making friends. I used to be very shy. I would not go up to someone that I did not know and say hello. 
I was afraid that people would not want to talk to me. I have changed. I have become less shy. I have learned that making friends is easy to do. All you have to do is say hello. Most people will respond to a smile and a friendly hello. People will begin to talk to you about the little things in their lives. You will soon realize that you have something in common with that person. Whenever I start talking to a new person, I find that there is some interest that we share. Maybe we know some of the same people, or we went to the same school. Often we find that we like the same music or the same movies. It is easy to have a conversation with someone once you find a topic that you can both relate to. The most important part in making friends is to listen to what the other person says. If you take an interest in them, they are sure to take an interest in you. I have learned many things from meeting people. I have had many fascinating conversations and I have made a lot of good friends. One day, a girl came up to me and said that she was lost. She couldn't find her way to her English class. I said that I was going to that class too. I told her to come with me. We began talking and we became very good friends. That was a few years ago. She is still one of my best friends. Just think, if she hadn't been lost, we might never have become friends. Getting old. My grandfather is getting old. When I was younger, my grandfather would carry me on his shoulders and we would go for a walk. Now, my grandfather cannot put me on his shoulders. He has a hard time walking and he uses a cane. My grandfather used to have lots of hair. Now he is bald. His skin doesn't look like it used to. It is more wrinkled. My grandfather takes more naps than he used to. He goes to the doctors and takes pills for his heart. I love my grandfather very much. I don't like the fact that he is getting older, but my mother says that growing older is just a fact of life. She says that we will all get older. Sometimes my grandfather forgets things. My mother says to be patient. I am patient. I try to help my grandfather as much as I can. I sometimes go for walks with him. I help him to walk when he has trouble. I cheer him up if I think he might be sad. I get things for him and I even read to him at night. He used to read to me when I was little. Now his eyesight is bad and he can't see very well. My grandfather tells me stories about when he was a boy. 
The world was a very different place than he tells me. His stories are interesting. Sometimes I wish we could trade places for a day so that I would know what it feels like to be old. My grandfather doesn't complain. He jokes about his old bones. I spend a lot of time with my grandfather. I hope that he is around for a long time. Time. Something you should never waste. Once an hour is gone, it is gone forever. You should make the most of every minute. Time is a funny thing. Some days go by so slowly. Those are the days that you do things that aren't fun. When you are having fun, time just flies by. Time is made up of different units. Seconds turn into minutes. Minutes turn into hours. Hours turn into days. Days turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months and months turn into years. We measure our lives by time. We are very concerned with time. Even little children are very conscious of time. Little children often want to appear older. So, if you ask a three-year-old how old he is, he will often say three and a half. Many of our sayings are based on time. Give me a minute. Hold on a second. I'm running out of time. Time's up. I just want an hour of your time. All of these are common things that we say, and they're all based on time. We are a society that lives by the clock. We almost all wear watches, and we glance at our watches a lot. Time is something that we can't see, but it is a big factor in our lives. How many times a day do you look at a watch or a clock? I bet you'd be surprised at just how many times you do. Amy was a girl who came into our classroom. She had many things wrong with her. Amy was in a wheelchair, and she couldn't talk. She couldn't make her hands and feet do what she wanted them to do. We wondered why Amy would even be in our class, because she really couldn't do much of anything. Amy had a teaching assistant who had to stay with her all the time. One day, the teaching assistant got called away. I had to look after Amy. I was afraid to look after her. I really didn't know what to do. I sat besides Amy, and I smiled at her. She smiled back at me. 
I never realized before that she had such a nice smile. Amy made a noise. It seemed like she wanted a crayon that was lying besides her. I put the crayon in her hand. She had trouble holding it, but eventually she got the crayon into her hand well enough so that she could make marks on the paper that was on the tray in front of her. Amy spent a long time making marks on the paper. She tried so hard to create whatever it was that she was drawing. She worked for a long time. I just watched her and I gave her a lot of credit for not giving up when she obviously had so many problems. When she was finally done, she picked up the paper with great difficulty. With a look of pride on her face, she handed me the picture. It was for me. I was very touched that she spent all that time drawing something for me. I thanked Amy and smiled at her. I told her I loved the picture. I still have that picture, although I'm not sure what it is a picture of. I learned a lot from Amy that day. I saw a brave girl who wouldn't give up. Whenever I think my problems are too big to handle, I think of Amy and I remember her smile. Memories Somebody once asked me, what the most valuable things that I owned were. I thought about that for a long time. Then I realized that most of the things that I had could be replaced. What I would not be able to replace were the photographs that I had of my friends and family. Photographs are memories that are captured on film. Some of the photographs are of people who are no longer with us. I would hate to lose them. Memories are precious. They are all we have sometimes to link us to days gone by. I remember the good times. I try to relive them in my mind sometimes. I remember the sad times. Some of the sad memories are painful, but they are all a part of my life, and I don't want to lose any of my memories. People come into our lives, and people leave our lives, but most people leave a memory for us. I have lots of memories, and when I look at my photographs, the memories come flooding back into my brain. I remember what people were like when they were younger. I remember vacations that I took. I remember days that seemed ordinary at the time, but you never get to relive even the ordinary days. Memories are so precious. Places to live. 
I live in a house. My house is in a town. My uncle lives in an apartment building. His apartment building is in a busy city. My cousin lives in a dormitory in a school. He shares his room with a classmate. My uncle lives out in the country. He lives on a farm. The police caught a criminal. Now the criminal lives in prison. When I go to summer camp, I live in a tent. When my parents go on vacation, they live in a motel or a hotel. A motel only has one or two floors. A hotel usually has many floors. My aunt and uncle live in a trailer. They like to move around from place to place. My friends live in a cottage by the lake. My grandfather lives in a retirement home. Many people who were about the same age as he lived there. I would like to live in a palace. I think you have to be a king or queen or a prince or a princess to live in a palace. The bathroom. There is a bathtub in my bathroom. On the wall over the bathtub, there is a shower head. We have a shower curtain hanging on the rod over the bathtub. If you want to take a shower, we close the curtain. There is soap and shampoo in the bathroom. The soap is used for washing yourself, and the shampoo is used to wash your hair. Towels are hanging on the rack. There are washcloths or face cloths to wash yourself with. The sink has hot and cold taps. There is a plug for the drain. When you pull the plug, the water runs out the sink. There is a toilet in the bathroom. When you flush the toilet, the water swishes out of it. There is toilet tissue hanging besides the toilet. We keep other things in the bathroom, too. There is a medicine cabinet that holds painkillers, toothpaste, and makeup. My mother likes to wear a lot of makeup on her face. There is also hairspray and gel. There are brushes and combs for our hair. There are toothbrushes and dental floss for our teeth. We only have one bathroom, so we line up to use it. It is good to have more than one bathroom in a house. The bedroom. My bed is nice and soft. I have a pretty bed sheet on my bed. I have sheets and a blanket on my bed also. I use feather pillows. My pillows have pillowcases on them. My dresser has a mirror on it.
I have a lamp on top of my dresser. I also have some picture frames with pictures of my friends and family on top of my dresser. There is an alarm clock besides my bed so that I can wake up on time in the morning. I keep many clothes in my dresser drawers. The drawers are nice and deep. My closet is large. It is a walk-in closet. I have my clothes hanging in my closet. All of the clothes are hung on hangers. My shoes are all lined up on the floor of my closet. There are shelves at the top of my closet. I keep games up there. There is a rug on my bedroom floor. My bedroom window looks out over the backyard. There are curtains on my bedroom window. My bedroom is very cozy. At night, I turn off the lamp and get under the covers. I set my alarm clock for seven o'clock. I lay my head on the pillow and I fall asleep.